Happy 4th of July, you beautiful Texans. It's the James Show, News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Welcome to the big show. What, what are you doing? Are you at work too? Did you get stuck at work? Because I have a hard time believing you're listening to this at the lake. If you're on the back of a jet ski, that may be one of the few places where the James Show is not easily accessible. Uh, understandably so, but for those of us who still have somewhat of a normal work day and we didn't get the day off, uh, we're still doing a whole show for you. We are live. It is 4th of July, 2024, and a couple of uh, things that you can look forward to if you can't stick around for the whole show, maybe you can come back and check out the podcast, but uh, you're going to hear Donald Trump's interview that just happened a couple hours ago on the Dan Bongino show. Not the whole thing. I just want to play you a, a, a highlight clip of it. And it contrasts to what's going on on the other side of the aisle, number one. Number two, uh, later in the show, in the last hour, you're going to hear the James Parker explanation. And it's just airtight. If I if I was a lawyer and knew what I was doing, I could say this is an airtight case. But uh, why America is the greatest country in the history of the universe, period, point blank, end of story. But we're starting with one of my uh, favorite guests as of late. Raven Harrison's back on the show because you've been really fired up about this Joe Biden situation. Latest update, a bunch of Democrat governors met with him last night. They came out, they stood at a podium, said, we're all standing with him. He seems fine to us. (laughs) Well, that's kind of what they said. You know, Gavin, I think, implied he was standing on him, not with him. But, uh, yeah, they had this meeting. I mean, because it's normal to have an emergency meeting at the White House where, you know, convicted felon and crackhead Hunter Biden is helping regulate these meetings uh, they, that, that's just uh, funny they there say to, of going yeah so it was funny everybody else said we stand behind him but the two that won his job gretchen uh whitmer and uh gavin newsom are like oh yeah uh we stand you know we're we're standing with him i.e we are waiting for him to kick over because we are dying to ascend <laughs> to the throne but nobody wants us all right personally raven i'm still at 51 percent thinking he stays in where are you at well i he's not going to stay in i mean what they're trying to do is it's better for us if he stays in because right now it's just it's it's political posturing he's out on 16 swing states or 16 states which include swing states because he's already you know on the ballot there they've got a logistical nightmare but it's one they brought upon himself they knew from the very first day they put him in here that this was a possibility but he's deteriorating faster than they thought he was going to so now they are in scramble mode of just kind of going hey shucks darn you know let's find another communist we can sub in here for joe biden and you know gavin newsom looks a lot like the joker so let's go there so i am hearing from people who know more than I do about some of these swing states like Michigan and Pennsylvania that already yeah. have Joe Biden on the ballot and in order to remove him they wouldn't have to you know have new paperwork filed from that state's Democrat party there would have to be a, an act from the state legislature that might not be able to pass so Joe Biden might be stuck on some of these ballots and then what are you going to do have a write in in Pennsylvania and hope that works well, you do what you're doing currently is you diffuse and you uh, you confuse people. They've got Michelle Obama on the envelope to these. So she's claimed that she has no interest. It's her soul, quote, is not in it. And uh, but yet they're doing everything they can to kind of confuse these voters. And then meanwhile, put out these same lie talking points that they always put out. That, you know, Trump is a dictator, but Joe's the one who did mandates. Joe's the one who who opened the border. Joe's the one, you know, who's prosecuting his political opponents. But they still have the people who will still regurgitate this CNN talking folks. And, you know, for everybody celebrating Fourth of July, thank you for our freedom, especially to our veterans. But I'm telling you, you can't listen to CNN for the same reason you can't drink out of the toilet. I've also seen a new poll, uh, a listener, I got to give him credit, Bob. Bob sent me a poll that shows, finally a poll shows, that Michelle Obama is the only candidate that's beating Trump right now. Uh, that was new information because uh, the polls I was reporting on on Monday and Tuesday were saying that she was behind him. But there was a new one. It was like Rasmussen, I think it was, or not Rasmussen. What's the other one we don't trust? Uh, Gallup or something, whatever it was, there is actually now evidence of somebody that can beat Trump and Michelle Obama. What's your thoughts on that? It's not going to happen. You know, Michelle Obama, it opens a whole litany because the first thing Obama did on his first day was seal his records. So if 
if she's going to throw her hat into there, that means we get to see your birth certificate. We get to open up all of that. And there's anything that, that deviates from what they've put out there over the past several years, then that's going to be a problem. So I disagree with that poll. I believe that it's out there. I believe Bob that he's got one that's out there, but I disagree. I found his email. Sorry to interrupt. It was Reuters. Reuters. Oh, Reuters. Okay. I was just going to say, I disagree with the fact that with the economy, the border wide open inflation rampant, that just the uniqueness of Michelle Obama is enough to everybody go, okay, screw the country. Let's just go with this. It's not going to happen. Who do you think it's going to be still Gavin? It's going to be Gavin. And you know, the way that they're, 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 throwing up Hillary's name, I really wonder because, you know, she had always had her eyes on it and, you know, maybe she's given it up, maybe she hasn't, but it's unlikely. So I think it's going to be that combination. Thank you very much, Raven Harrison. How do they find you outside of the show? Uh, They can find me at ravenharrison.com or theroarmission.com and we're going to be out here helping vets today. So everybody keep it safe and have a great fourth. Thank you, Raven. Ravenharrison.com uh, your thoughts. A bunch of Democrat governors said they're standing by Biden after their White House visit. I'm still at my 51 percent thinking Joe Biden is still going to be the candidate. And look, maybe after he wins, he'll get inaugurated. They'll come up with some event like, oh, he's got the sniffles. He's going to step aside. They'll slide Kamala in there. And, you know, even though they hate her, it's still better than Trump to, from their point of view. But what do you think? 800-288-9227. Raven thinks it's going to be Gavin Newsom. I mean, maybe, but he doesn't look like he's going to beat Trump, according to the polls right now. What about Michelle Obama? That's the conversation. 800-288-9227. It's the 4th of July edition of The James Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, welcome to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Happy 4th of July. The weirdest presidential election season of your lifetime continues Uh, One of the weird things we have is everyone's got a cell phone in their pocket that everyone knows how to record on it now. So people are sneaking out videos and uh, sometimes it's just audio. And one of them today that's uh, making the rounds is uh, Donald Trump passed up some foursome on a golf course that asked for his autograph. They had him sign. looks like they had him sign a couple of $20 bills, which is, I don't know, I I guess that's a pretty cool thing to do. The president signed my, uh, my money. But one of the guys pulled out his cell phone and started recording and held it at his hip. So I don't think Donald Trump knew he was being recorded. In fact, I'm pretty sure. And you'll hear me edit something out here. It's the F word. Yes, Donald Trump said the F word. But here he is in the middle of a round of golf talking candidly to just random Americans, you know, strangers who seem to be friendly to him. But he's talking about the Biden situation. And listen to how, first off, how convinced he sounds that Biden's going to step down. You gave me so much. How did I do with the debate the other night? Oh, oh fantastic. Amazing. That all broken down pile of crap. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad guy. He just quit, you know. He's quitting the rest. Is that right? Yep. I got him out of the right. And that means we have Kamala. Oh. I think she's going to be better. She's so bad. She's so <laughs> pathetic. It's so amazing. It's just she's so bad. So. I just can't imagine. But that. can you imagine that guy with dealing with Putin and the president of China, who's a fierce person? He's a fierce man. Right. Very tough guy, and they see him. They probably they can't. But it, it, they just announced he's he's probably quitting. Thank you. Yeah, Very good. yeah Time's that's coming Just keep knocking him out, right? <laughs> Thank you. And then, uh, so that was him on the golf course, just talking to some random guys. By the way. He is old. He's like 78, but he's still out in the middle of a 100-degree day, active. Yeah, he's riding a golf cart. I don't think I would like to pull my clubs around in 100 degrees. But, you know, just talking off the cuff, being recorded secretly, and then nothing suspicious there. No weird stutters or freezes or whatever. And then on the other side, you know, you you, you try and keep up with this. And you want to respect people's privacy. So there's a case to be made that uh, so many of these... Uh, sneaky little videos that come out. That's that's really not w- what we should be aiming for. However, there's still lessons to be learned from this. Uh, there was a video that was snuck out of the meeting that Biden had with the uh, Democrat governors last night. And uh, this was one of Biden's uh, main sticking points here at the, at the meeting. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not f-ing leaving. The show goes on. This is my home. They're going to need a wrecking ball to take me out of here. They're going to need to send in the National Guard a SWAT team because I ain't going nowhere. All right. 
guy. I mean, he kind of sounded like Leonardo DiCaprio there for a second. I, I get them confused sometimes, uh, Joe Biden and Leo. To the phones we go. What do you think is going to happen? 800-288-9227. 800-288-WBAP. Let's ask David in Cleburne. You're on the James Show. What do you think? I keep hearing about a possible Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris ticket. Uh, aren't they both from California? Is that even possible for them to run together? You know, I hear a lot of people say that they can't run together, and it's like a 25th Amendment thing. I think that's a 12th Amendment thing. The president and vice president have to be from different states. Well, I know that they said Trump and DeSantis couldn't run together because they're both from Florida. Yeah, I think you're right on that. I, th- I think you're spot on. So, yeah, was, well, okay. So I know what you're thinking next step. I'm sorry. I'm just being a little slow. So if they do put Kevin Newsom on the front of the ticket, they're going to have to slide Kamala out of there. They are going to burn uh, the identity politics crowd, the sort of like, what is Joy Reid going to say about that? How is she going to offend that? You know, how how are these people? How's like an Al Sharpton or even an Elizabeth Warren who, who's really hard on the, the, the women's stuff? How are they going to defend that? Well, if they get rid of Kamala, they get rid of all the donations. Right. All the money they raised, uh, according to the Federal Election Commission rules, can only be spent by either Biden or Kamala. So, well, that makes Gavin Newsom sort of... Uh, a lot less more likely of a candidate. Who do you think it's going to be? Well, I really, I really don't, I really don't know. What if they, here, here's, I'm, I'm starting to think out of the box here because we're running out of options. What if they get Michelle Obama to run and then she wins and then they say, listen, in like February of 2025, you can go ahead and resign. We'll slide Kamala over and uh, you can be done with this. We just, we just need the win. We just need to get the W and you don't actually have to do the job. We just need to beat Trump. Is that too crazy? Uh, I mean, I guess that's possible. I mean, Bongino said that he worked with with uh, Michelle Obama. He said that there's no way that she wants to get in the spotlight, that she hates the spotlight. Yeah, I've heard Bongino say that, and I've heard other people say that. And, um, you know, this is a guy that would know. This is a guy that's worked in several presidential administrations and seen how they talk behind closed doors. And, you know, you and I and the guy listening to us can't possibly fathom not enjoying or at least uh, respecting the honor of being in the White House. But not everybody likes this country, David. No, they don't. It's clear. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it. That is David and Cleburne. Round of applause for uh, 4th of July. Thank you very much. Now, 4th of July, of course, it's one of my favorite holidays because I'm a very pro-American guy, but it's also my favorite holiday because I love, I don't know what it is, it's just, I'm like 70% white trash. I just love blowing stuff up. I don't know why. Well, I see you got them snakes and sparklers, but where's good stuff, man? Good stuff. This is the good stuff. Snakes and sparklers. Are you nuts, dude? You need stuff to explode. Go boom. Why is that good? What? <laughs> You might, might as well ask, why is the tree good? Why is the sunset good? Why are boobs good? Man, firecrackers. So you're going to tell me that you don't have no black cats, no Roman candles or screaming memes? No. Oh, come on, man. You don't got no lady fingers, buzz buttles, snicker bombs, church burners, finger blasters, gut busters, zippity doo or crap flappers? No, I don't. You're going to stand there owning a fireworks stand and tell me you don't have no whistling bungholes? No spleen splitters, whisker biscuits, honky lighters, husker do's, husker don'ts, cherry bombs, nips and dazers, with or without the scooter stick, or one single whistling kitty chaser? All right, on this uh, 4th of July, people like telling patriotic stories. I found one that floated across my social media feed. I saw this like four times. I'm like, what am, what am I doing? I need to stop and I need to grab this for you. So uh, I recorded it. It's Wesley Hunt. He's a fairly new congressman. I think he's only been elected once or maybe reelected once. And uh, he's a brother, but he's out of the Houston area. And he tells his favorite Trump story uh, about a Trump meeting with the Taliban. This is what Con- Congressman Wesley Hunt. When we were negotiating with the Taliban, while President Trump was still the president, um, President Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan, but he wanted a conditions based withdrawal, mm-hmm. meaning that you do what we tell you to do. And then we will start pulling troops back slowly as long as you abide by our rules. It's President Trump Mark, and Mike Pompeo, and they are talking to Taliban leadership in the room, and they had one translator in the room. President Trump looked at the, at the Taliban leader and said this, I want to leave Afghanistan, but it's going to be a conditions-based withdrawal. And translator translated. 
And he said, if you harm a, a hair on a single American, I'm going to kill you. And the translator goes, and Trump goes, tell him what I said. Tell him what I said. Reached in his pocket, pulled out a satellite photo of the leader of the Taliban's home and handed it to him. Shut up. Got up and walked out the room. That was Congressman Wesley Hunt telling his favorite Trump story. That's got to be not so fun for the Taliban guy, don't you think? All right, uh, election talk when we continue. I have some more sound bites from the uh, the news reaction and the speculation about the president not being the nominee in November. I'm at 51% because and my big question is who would replace him? I think they would all love to shove him aside if they had a better second option. They don't have a better plan B. Or you could tell me who the plan B is going to be. 800-288-9227. It's The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Hey there, welcome back to The James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Walking you through what is the most weird, mutant, Chernobyl-type election we've been through. And by Chernobyl, like if... You know, it, the, the the scaremongering of what could happen from nuclear fallout with like a fish with three eyes or whatever. We, we really thought after Chernobyl would happen, we'd see like deer coming out of the forest with like a stegosaurus plate growing out of their back. Well, the mutants didn't really happen at Chernobyl. They're happening in this election season. To help us make more sense of it, my buddy James Varney's back on from Real Clear Politics and Real Clear Investigations. And people are watching y'all right now, James Varney, because you're one of the most uh, respected aggregators of polling data. And it looks like look, Trump may just be cruising to victory after that uh, Thursday debate, no matter what happens. Well, I think that's probably true, James, if Biden stays in the race. Right. And and I think that's the big question. Now, we, we know that the, they had the Democratic governors had a conference call following the calamitous debate. And I know that the Biden administration and the Democratic Party have been on Twitter and elsewhere trying to convince everybody that Biden is, is in it and he's staying in it. But I don't think people are really sold on that idea, right? And I, I've seen people even referencing George McGovern's time, probably before your time, but when he had picked Eagleton to be his vice president and then a report came out that Eagleton had had a psychiatric condition at one point in his life, McGovern came out and said, I'm 1,000% behind Eagleton. And then went into a closed meeting and canned him. From Changed his mind. So, right. So, so they're things, always going to say they're for him until they don't. Exactly. And look, I mean, you can look at it two ways, right? One is that November is right around the corner and Biden doesn't have enough time to turn this ship around. Or you can say this is actually a long time in politics. And who knows what's going to happen? I mean, if, if Trump, this tape that they got, that they're trying to make a mountain out of with Trump on the golf course. You know, it, it, Trump can sometimes be his own worst enemy. And while I feel like the campaign has done a very good job of just letting Biden kind of hang himself uh, during the debate and after, you know, with the next four months, who knows what's going to happen? But Wait a I second. Some so, trick. so we played that tape earlier, the secret recording on the golf course. What what could possibly be the criticism of that? He, he said the F word. No, no, I don't think it's so much a criticism. I think it's that. Uh, you know, the, the voters that are probably thinking, I really probably should go with Trump, even though I think, you know, he's kind of a buffoon, maybe. And I'm, I'm bothered sometimes by uh, the way he's so, uh, you know, accusatory and, and putting people down and the idea that he's non-presidential. And this can reinforce that with some voters, you know, and I don't know how many things like that are going to happen between now and then, but I would expect there to be some so-called dirty tricks between now and November. And you don't know how that might change the calculus. Ooh, dirty tricks. Uh, look, the only thing that I, uh, the variable that I see on the Trump side is who he picks for his VP. And that conversation is just dried up. It seems like no one cares. And I'm starting to think maybe I don't care either. Well, that's an interesting point, and and I wonder about that myself. I I feel like it, uh, I'm going to mispronounce his name, uh, Bergam, the, the Dakota governor. You know, kind of looked to me like he was probably the most likely pick, right? Like J D Vance had gotten some talk, but I don't know that Trump needs him for Ohio. I don't know that Trump really needs 
a vice president in the classical sense, right, where somebody would pick their running mate because they could deliver a state or because it would appeal to a certain sect of voters. I'm not sure that Trump is that kind of candidate. And I think you're right. It, it, it doesn't make a world of difference at this point who he picks, except for this. Is there going to be a vice presidential debate? And if there was, would that have the same kind of impact that this Trump-Biden debate had? Man, no one's even thought for four seconds of a vice presidential debate. It, I mean, well, like there normally is one. Well, I know that. Of course, it normally is one. But again, this is the most mutated, Born different Chernobyl. Right. right, right. This is the weirdest presidential election cycle. Because, I mean, think about all the first like if you because we keep adding to this weird list of the first. This is the first time in our lifetime that we've had a guy. Uh, who was previously president running against a guy who's currently pl- right. president. So the first non-consecutive uh, thing since Grover Cleveland. And then we have on top of that, uh, now Trump is a convicted felon. Whether or not it gets overturned in appeal or whatever, he still is a convicted felon. Uh, we didn't have a primary system for either side. And, and I don't know which one was weirder because um, neither side had a full system of debates. We already knew who the, the candidates were going to be. And then there was a, a handful of primaries and caucuses on the democrat side where they didn't even vote they just deemed biden to be the winner and then you have all the other stuff that's going on with the early debate before the conventions before they're technically the candidates and now talk of a guy dropping out after everyone's done all the voting in the primaries and caucuses i mean we we just can't right get a weirder well, system of, than we've got today but think about all that you just laid out there james and you know at the beginning you were suggesting that it looks like trump is on cruise control to win And I think that that's true if you can go on cruise control. But when you take what all those different things that you just said and you talk about what an unorthodox and unprecedented kind of campaign this has been up to this point, why would you think anything would go on cruise control between now and November? All right. That's just give me something to think about. Uh, What are you doing over at Real Clear Investigations? They they kicked you out yet? No, they haven't yet. They still want the sexual misconduct story, which I will be filing tomorrow. I, I, but I don't know if that will go up next week or not. Um, and then, you know, we always have stories uh, that are being done by other people. Paul Sperry had the story that I mentioned before about how Clapper had done things. We've got some good stories up about government waste. We work with uh, Adam Angievsky, who uh, with the group Open the Books, who I'm sure you know. Uh, so there's always something worth reading at Real Clear Investigation. Well, I saw Wegman, actually, one of your co-workers there at Real Clear, got into the, the press pool and asked KJP the, the question yesterday that ended up being the soundbite everyone was playing. She's just uh, responding to Real Clear Politics, Wegman saying, the President Biden is sharp as ever. Yeah. Well, have you seen the tapes for that? I mean, I would suggest people look at Matt Taibbi's piece in Racket uh, about Biden's not sharp as attack. It's behind a paywall. But prior to it, it's, it, there's a six-minute video that some guys put out. You know about that kind of stuff more than I do. Right on that topic, saying, is Biden sharp as attack? And it's sort of a collection of talking heads wow. and press saying he's sharp as attack, just with video of him being dull. Right, sharp as a bowling ball. All right, James Varney, Real Clear Politics, Real Clear Investigations. Thanks for being back on the show. Happy and to be here, James. I'm a big fan of Matt Taibbi, so I'll go find that. And we all know how to get around paywalls, don't we? If not, send me an email. I'll tell you how. It's the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Happy birthday, America. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Let's go. You're listening to the James Show. Why are you listening to me instead of on the lake in your beautiful 120-foot yacht with uh, your second wife and... All of your oh, that's right. Normal people have to work even on holidays. Well, I'm here with you, and also I, I almost feel bad making all my awesome guests work, but I still got to put, to, put together a good show. So uh, back from SMU, Dr. Matthew Wilson on the show. Not only am I interrupting your Fourth of July, but also your summer break. So thanks for being on the show, Matt. No problem. Just, just to let you know, I'm uh, talking to you from my 120 foot yacht, um, but I'm still just on my first wife. So <laughs> right. Uh, SMU yeah. pays better than I thought. Well done. <laughs> okay, so it, uh, something already came up uh, earlier in the show, and I kind of wish you had been here. But people keep pointing out uh, the part of the 12th Amendment that says the president and vice president can't be from the same state. And so if Kamala Harris is going to remain on the ticket, it seems like they couldn't replace Joe Biden with Gavin Newsom. Does that ring true to you? 
I couldn't is too strong. It it makes things complicated. I mean, this is the same issue that comes into play if Donald Trump wanted to choose Marco Rubio, for example, as or Byron Donalds or DeSantis. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Any of those Floridians. Uh, it, it makes things complicated. And one of them might have to change their uh, state of residence. Now, you know, Kamala Harris could pretty easily, since she doesn't actually live in California, she could change her voter registration to Washington, D.C., and that problem would be solved. Um, obviously, Newsom, as governor of California, is, is, has a much harder time uh, moving to another state. But the bigger issue, though, is that I can't imagine if they passed over Kamala Harris for the top spot that she would remain on the ticket as, say, Gavin Newsom's vice president. That would just be, I would think, far too galling for her ego. I think she would be pretty upset about that scenario. Okay, so the 12th Amendment wasn't part of the original Bill of Rights. It it was passed 1804, 1803, ratified 1804. What was going on? They felt the need to add that in there that, hey, we can't have these two guys be from the same states, especially if it seems like it's so easy to get around it. Well, because the the whole being from the same state thing was really kind of an afterthought. Uh, it was a minor part of the 12th Amendment. The major purpose for that was to, to change the way the vice president is selected, because the way it was done before that is that whoever got the second most electoral votes was chosen vice president. So therefore, if that system were still in effect uh, in you know 2016, Donald Trump would have been elected president and his vice president would have been Hillary Clinton. And in 2020, Joe Biden would have been elected president and Donald Trump would have been elected vice president. That would have been some strange scenarios. Yeah, yeah. That'd be weird to see the president and vice president constantly at each other's throat. But I also kind of appreciate the the balance of power of like, hey, if this... uh, p- political interest is going to be the president. The second uh, biggest vote getting political interest gets to break the tie in the Senate, which is really the only thing the vice president does that I know of. I mean, what's the point of the vice president? Right. It seemed like a nice little separation of power. Well, that was I mean, that was the way it worked for the first few elections. But then, you know, in 1800, uh, you had a, a, you know, a scenario play out where you get you've got bitter political rivals who end up uh, elected president and vice president. That's a scenario that they wanted to uh, avoid going forward. And so that that's anyway, that's where the 12th Amendment came from. Um, but one small codicil of the 12th Amendment that didn't get a lot of thought at the time is this provision that the president and the vice president, that an elector cannot vote for president and vice president as two individuals from the same state. Well, you make it sound real easy to scoot around it, though, because if you're Marco Rubio or Byron Donalds or Kamala Harris, you could now say my primary residency is in D.C. and that's not going to be an issue. Is it really that easy to get around or have we ever had to deal with this before? Uh, We have, actually. Um, When uh, we had when George W. Bush chose Dick Cheney as his running mate. Um, at the time, uh, Cheney was living in Texas, but was, you know, also had a home in Wyoming. And so there, there was some discussion of it then, but, you know, Cheney just registers a voter in Wyoming and that did away with that. So, all right, Garrett, uh, Dr. Wilson, he gets 10 points for knowing the answer to that trivia question. You get 10 points for that one, Dr. Wilson. Uh, okay. So you, you knew before you asked me what the answer to that question was. No, I didn't. I, I didn't know if there was a historical precedent where someone had to change their address. I, that's that, that's why I'm impressed. Uh, and, and that's why we have political science professors on, because you know things that I don't. I've been talking on the radio for 20 years. You've been teaching classes. Is there any other constitutional concerns that a layman like me should be asking but is not aware of? Constitutionally, not really. I mean, that's... Uh, this question of whether the president and vice presidential candidates are from the same state is a, a minor one that you know would have to be dealt with in some scenarios. But you know the bigger bigger question constitutionally is uh, what would be the mechanism for that might be adopted for getting Biden out of office. You know whether it's the twenty fifth amendment if the the cabinet truly felt that he was incapable of exercising uh, the duties of the office. That's something that could come into play. That's a a constitutional provision. But, you know, otherwise, what's going to just get really arcane are the party rules, which are not in the Constitution. Uh, Democratic Party rules, if, in fact, now that all of the primaries are over, if the person that essentially all of the delegates are pledged to, uh, either by his own choice or by an attempt to force him, uh, is, is sought to be replaced. I mean, 
but those aren't constitutional. Nah. And I don't really care how a party wants to do its own rules. If y'all want to be all screwy with how you choose your nominee, the voters will hold you accountable if you go too far in that direction, hopefully. But yeah, the the, the 25th Amendment is something that a lot of people throw around, but it seems weird to me because I don't know of any other job that's spelled out to the cabinet members like this because the cabinet members is is sort of a, a very fluid group of people. It just started out with like, what, six of them, and now it's like 14 or something huge like that. So that's that seems uh, pretty unlikely and territory that we haven't really thought about yet. That's right. But and it's supposed to be unlikely and it's supposed to only cover really extreme scenarios because, you know, what they certainly wanted to avoid was it ever being invoked as part of you know partisan political machinations or anything like that. It really is reserved for a scenario where it's obvious that the president simply can't discharge his duties. Uh, and of course, the cabinet, these are all people who would have been appointed by the president. They are presumably of his party. They're his loyalists. So, you know, this is not going to be a kind of scheming cabal of people trying to do in a capable president. It really is reserved for the very unusual scenario that we have not yet encountered in our history, where the president, uh, at least since the passage of the 25th Amendment, when the president is truly and obviously just incapable of doing the job. Well, as a political science professor at SMU, do you have any historical insight on is America the greatest country ever? And if not, who? Uh, you know, I think the United States is the greatest country ever. The United States is uh, the most economically, militarily, culturally powerful nation in the history of the world. I mean, if that's how we define greatness. But but also the United States um, embodies an, an ideal. It's more than just uh, material power. The United States embodies a political ideal of limited representative government, constitutionalism uh, rights and freedoms and I, I think that's something to be proud of yep no one has freedom of speech like we do no one has a second amendment like we do no one sent a man to the moon no one has more olympic medals no one has more nobel prize winners no one has more super bowls than america thank you very much all right thanks for having me dr matthew wilson smu political science professor on this happy fourth of july from the james show news talk 820 wbap now on fm at 93.3 Hey, welcome back to the James Show. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Happy 4th of July. You know, uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, Joe Biden can prove that last week's debate performance, it was just a bad night. It was just a one-off. All he has to do is come out and answer questions. Instead of sending KJP out to do the press briefings and answer questions, send, send Biden out. Just let him talk for half an hour, hour, couple hours. That would put all this to bed. Why not just do that? Why not just randomly call into radio shows and talk for a half hour at a time? Because that's what Trump did today. On Right before the James show happened on the Dan Bongino show, Donald Trump called in and just chatted for about a half hour or so of the news of the day and everything that's going on. And he sounded up. He sounded with it. This is not an edited uh, tape. I, did, I didn't add anything or take anything away from this. Um, I'm just going to play you the, the, like the last nine minutes because he talked for a, a half hour. But this is where all the good stuff was. The, the stuff at the beginning was about the trials and the, the debates and stuff. And we've already done that. But um, just listen to how different Trump is versus Biden. And this is exactly what Jake Tapper and the crew are begging Biden to do. Just come out, have an unscripted chat in public, unedited, live, on air, and uh, prove to the world that you're mentally there. So this was earlier. You uh, you may have heard it already on WBAP, but I know most of you even didn't. Dan Bongino with Donald Trump. Mr. President, I know you've got a thousand important decisions you have to make about personnel with your team. I'm not naive to that, but I made the argument on my show a couple times. You may think I'm crazy, maybe not. I, I think your selection for attorney general is your most important pick. Vice president's Correct. obviously important, but if we get the attorney general wrong, I know he won't, but if we get that wrong after this abomination of justice and what happened to you, uh, we're not going to have a country left. Your thoughts on that? Yeah. It's a very big choice, and I made two bad choices. Now, you know, I was loyal. Uh, Jeff Sessions... Uh, he was the first senator to endorse me. He came to me, please let me. He was begging me to do it after I won. And I was loyal, and he didn't have what it took. You know, as soon as he heard the word Russia, he ran for the hills. And Bill Barr, you know, unfortunately, I know he endorsed me recently, so it's always tough to be, I mean, if you can believe that he endorsed me. But uh, he was uh, not a man of strength. He was a coward. 
and he was afraid to go after people on the election uh, cheating that went on that you know and everybody knows with a brain went on. And we're not going to let that happen again. But I wish, uh, you know, I made two different choices there. I had it twice. And then uh, you have other important positions, too. I think, uh, by the way, I think defense was very good at the end. He did a good job. But we had mostly good people. You know, Bob Lighthizer was great. We had a lot of great people. But uh, now I know everybody, Dan. I know the good ones, the strong ones, the weak ones, the dumb ones, the smart ones. I know them all. But I was never, you know, I was never a Washington guy. I was, I was with you in New York, and I knew yeah. New York very well. But now I know Washington better than probably anybody. And I well, know the good ones and the bad ones, the weak ones and the, the strong ones. And we got to get yeah. that. But that is an important. And then you need Secretary of State. You need Secretary of Defense. They're all important, Dan, every one of them. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I just attorney general with everything at the weaponization of the Justice Department yep, is uh, absolutely. really Very troubling. important decision. So, no question about it. Speaking of your trial here as well, Mark Levin, a friend of both of ours, a real right. great patriot there, he put out a very uh, interesting uh, the thread this morning on his social media accounts talking about how the Supreme Court, and we don't know yet what's going to happen, but if there is a ridiculous conviction in this sham, disgusting, filth-ridden, grotesque trial, I don't have enough adjectives and adverbs to describe this abomination, that the Supreme Court should take this thing immediately on due process violations. They've yet to state a crime, no less prove beyond a reasonable doubt you committed one your thoughts on that and the left's attempts right now to intimidate the supreme court going after alito and others they're clearly doing that to send a message in case this winds up at the supreme court well they're trying to play the ref alito's a tough guy and he's strong and very very smart and he put out a great statement today. In fact, I commented on, I don't know if you saw that, on truth. Your people love truth, and so do I. And, uh, but I commented on it. I gave him a lot of credit for it. But they play the ref. You know, they intimidate him. They, uh, they still, to this day, you know, by law, they have to give, you can't have protesters, you can't around their houses. You can't, they haven't done a thing. They haven't done a thing. What they're doing is so bad. They haven't done anything to protect the justices. They, it's really disgraceful what's going on. You know, all that we heard about it for two years but alito's great thomas great the 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 three that i put in i think they do i mean it's a little early but uh people are uh, people are starting to warm up to him i will say this but they've got to be strong and they've got to be tough alito's been very tough very good and thomas has been good and we're going to see how it all works out but it's such an important position such a big deal but when I look at the way they're treated, you know, they play the ref. They try and scare them. They try and, uh, you know, I get, look, they're humans like everybody else, but they they try and do Bobby Knight. You know, the great Bobby Knight. It scream, scream, oh, scream. And Bobby yeah. said, well, you're not going to win this one, but we'll win the next call, right? Yeah. And that's what they do with our judges. Not only the Supreme Court justices, but they do it with judges, and they do it with a lot of different people. They do it with a lot of different people where they're afraid to function. People are afraid to function because they don't want to go through it. But the, uh, and, and the problem is the left. Look, you know, the problem is the left. I see, I know the left, I know the right. The big problem here, and they, they don't talk about it, the problem is the left and the danger comes from, the big danger comes from the left. Yeah, they do. I mean, obviously they've taken on totalitarian tendencies. I mean, we've seen it. The evidence is everywhere. Mr. President, this discussion... Uh, I hate to even bring this embarrassing to even have this discussion, but this is how crazy they are. This discussion of jail and the Secret Service advancing a jail. I mean, this is third world type stuff. I, I, I got to tell you, there are third world, you know, tin pot Look. dictators who are watching this. And in, 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 I can't believe what's happening. We're living in a third world country. We have no borders. They're pouring in by the millions and they're coming from prisons and jails and mental institutions and insane asylums. And they're coming. They're, they're terrorists. Massive numbers of terrorists are coming in. They're coming from the Congo. They're coming from all over Africa. They're coming from all over Asia and they're coming from the Middle East. And they're coming from South America, but you would be amazed. The numbers are getting bigger outside of South America. They're coming from all over the world. We have no idea who they are, in many cases, from where they come. The only thing we know is they're tough as hell, and they're criminals. Many, many criminals are coming in. Many, many criminals are coming in. And this horrible president, the worst president in the history of our country, is allowing it to happen. He's destroying the fabric of our country. And yeah. we're going to have the biggest deportation effort ever. 
and we're going to get and we're going to start with the bad ones and we know who they are and you know who knows who who they are the local police they know everything about them uh, we're going to give immunity to them and we're going to let them do their job because they have to but local police they're afraid to protect people because they end up losing their pension losing their job you know it better than anybody they lose their family if they do yeah. their job and we're not going to let yeah. that happen they have to do their job so, Mr. President, uh, uh, Joe Biden had a uh, a rally in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in a gym. I think about five people showed up, uh, two oh, family terrible. members and three members of the media. Uh, how does that make you feel uh, that they're they're trying to hold you up in a courtroom? And the and the reason they're doing it is obvious. You go to the South Bronx, a deep blue area. Thousands of people show up. Uh, it's yeah. a raucous crowd. Joe Biden goes to an area it should be Democrat. And, uh, you know, five, ten people. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but not too much. The guy can't draw a crowd. He can't compete against you. He's not a leader. And the whole thing was a disgrace. The whole election was a rigged election and a disgrace. And we're going to make it up. November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. All right. Now, that's just a piece. We're back live now on The James Show. That's just a piece of Donald Trump's interview on the Dan Bongino show earlier today. If you want to hear the whole thing, Dan Bongino said he put it up on his Rumble channel. The whole piece is a little over a half hour. The unedited thing. You can go check it out. But that is exactly what Joe Biden should be doing right now. And if he did that, if he just did an interview, like the piece of what uh, you heard from Trump on Bongino earlier today on WBAP, this would put an end to all that dementia talk, but he's not doing it. 800-288-WBAP if you want to be a part of the conversation. Coming up next, Dan Snell on The James Show. It's News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3.